Amy, welcome along. I'm so excited to have you on Talking Trends today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So let's sort of dive straight into today's interview. And I was hoping that you could start off by sharing with us any trends or predictions that you have in the area of marketing in the fitness industry. Great. Um, well, I've just come off of a couple of conferences, as I know you have, and I was at the AFS conference this weekend. Um, and I know that a lot of the insights around those conferences have kind of been shared and you've had a lot of the speakers on the show. So I thought I would share a different spin on some of these insights. Um, Les Mills has just released the 2019 Global Consumer Fitness Survey, and it brought some insights for club owners that I thought would be timely and relevant to your conversation. Um, so if that's okay with you, then I'll kind of lead off with that. You bet it is. Let's go for it. All right. So in the area of marketing, one of the um, things we're learning about generation active, we're calling it, this is our millennials and our Gen Zs. And for those of you who are not really sure what age that is, it's not me. It might be you, Chantel. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so really, we're looking at all of these members and potential members that are ages 8 to 38. And so what we're learning about these when it comes to marketing is the trends that you're seeing around Facebook and Insta and now Insta Stories, those are dri being driven by a lot of this generation active, we're calling them, these two uh, age groups. And so probably one of the trends that I would leave with the, with the owners and people thinking about marketing their business is to really think about influencers and using those channels, using those vehicles. How can you empower your, your influencers, which are probably already your members and probably already your instructors? and really think about creating a campaign for those influencers and a strategy whereby they can become your brand ambassador and really create that brand awareness in your community. So that's a tip that I think is kind of trending and that people should think about when it comes to these populations. I absolutely love that, Amy. And I've got to admit, I haven't heard of Generation Active before, but how fantastic is that? And so you said that's between the ages of 8 and 38. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So millennials are your 25 to 38 and your Gen Z is your 8 to 24. Okay. So we're kind of grouping all of them together. And I've got to tell you here in Australia, we've got a couple of businesses that have done a really good job of what you're talking about as far as uh, I guess celebrating and really recognizing a few key influences within their facilities and then using those influences to really drive social media traffic and, and build a community around their gym. I love that idea. Yeah, and I think also for club owners to realize that this is your new member. So for you to have longevity in this industry, yes, you want to take care of your baby boomers and your Gen X, but this is going to be the bulk of your new joiners if it isn't already. And this makes up 80% of our gym goers globally. So this really is a population that we need to be thinking about. And I'll give ideas for programming and such as we go through as well. Excellent, I'm really excited to get to that part of the conversation with you. So that's our marketing piece, Amy. What about when it comes to sales? Do you have any sort of thoughts, trends, predictions in that area? Yeah. So again, I'll emphasize, I shared this on your show before, but we still know that the number one people, the number one reason people would join your facility is proximity. That's still true. The number two reason is because of a compelling group schedule and group offerings. So again, I'll lead with that just to remind club owners to think about what that means, even outside of your live programming is to have a compelling schedule that will drive the sales process and drive people even to be interested. Um, but one of the areas I'm really passionate about when it comes to the sales process is thinking about motivation and behavior and thinking about how we can kind of rethink our sales process to attract a different population that might be contemplative and they're not coming to your club yet. And how are we going to get out in our communities and really start to welcome a different subset of individuals who haven't been seen in the club before? And I think that really it's attracting them through your sales avenues and channels, but it's also creating a welcoming environment. It's creating 
creating a customer journey, and then it's also really integrating them into your club from the very beginning of their experience with your facility. So all of those things really will help with motivation and help that person have uh, long, the longevity. I'm actually so glad that you brought up that piece on integrating into the, into our clubs and onboarding because just about a week ago I had I did an interview with Elias Scar um, from Results Based Training and one of the things that we talked about, the big thing that we talked about, is what to do in that 13, 90 and then one year sort of period of time when a new member joins us in the gym. And it's such an important time that we connect with that person and have all those touch points along the way. So for those of you that are really interested to hear a little bit more about that, that interview um, with Elias is going to be coming out, ooh, I'm going to say around early May. Um, so you guys will be able to check that out. So I love that point, Amy, and I think that, I imagine that most of the owners and managers out there have an onboarding process. I hope that they do, but I always feel like it doesn't hurt to kind of go back and just cross check and see what's working and see what's not working and hear about what other people are doing. Would you agree? I agree. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to just give a quick, uh, my certification, my advanced certification that I maintain is from American Council on Exercise. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so the really the health coach certification helps your professionals to address these needs and help someone through these initial stages in the gym and create the welcoming environment, help them with setting goals and achieving goals. Um, so that's one resource I would just offer. And then a lot of companies have a smart start or a formula, as you said. In fact, I created them for several companies throughout the years. Uh, but I, I would just say revisit that and rethink it. And again, do it through the lens of this new member. Um, we know now that the average age of the new joiner is 30 years old. So is your, uh, how are you, the way you're selling your sales process and then the way that you're integrating the member into the club, is it really speaking to that individual and their unique needs? It's uh, such an important part of the process, Amy. Thank you for that. So let's keep going. Our next category is managing teams. Tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are around this area. Yeah, so um, I miss managing teams. I don't have a team right now in my current role, but I have done this successfully for 25 years. So as I was reflecting on this, um, really, you know, thinking about engagement and connectivity, I would offer that as leaders, that's really with getting your employees to see the greater purpose that you're all aligned in your vision and your strategy and that you have clear, open communication. Um, but really the, the things that you could learn from right now in our current society is around inclusion. It's around diversity. It's around really allowing everyone in your workforce to have a voice and to look for opportunities to develop people. And the leaders that are able to do this in a collaborative way are the ones that we're seeing that are really rising to the challenge of, um, of meeting this, the keeping good employees and managing a team in a common uh, goal. So that's what I would share and lessons I've learned along the way as well. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I've got to point out a leader who I am just completely have so much admiration for. And I've seen that her sort of come into the fitness industry only in the last 12 months. And that's Francesca Schuler from In Shape Health Clubs. And to, if I think about what an amazing leader looks like to me, then I would describe Francesca. And you just touched on a couple of points when you mentioned uh, about having uh, diversity within our team and inclusiveness and making sure that we're really leading by example. And I think that's a great area. So if anyone uh, is interested to know more about how Francesca leads her team, I'll also put a link uh, in our notes for today because we did, I did have a chance to catch up with her, I think in about December of 2018. So that's a really nice chat that I had. So great one there, Amy. So let's keep going. Our next one is retention and or customer service. I'm going to throw it over to you. What do you want to talk about? Okay. Um, first, Francesca is one of my partners. So thank you for oh, giving her. There you go. Her Happy coincidence. Yes, I get to work with her a lot. Um, and so thank you for giving her a shout out. Um, second, so I'm going to take this again in a different direction. And I do want to speak to retention, but I want to speak to employee retention. Oh, um, I like so the spin. 
Yeah, so I get I get the opportunity in my role to work with a lot of our Rex Roundtable groups in the U.S. I also just read a recent URSA report that says that right now, a lot of the conversations that are happening are around retaining great staff and your employees. And I know I hear it out in, in my role again all the time. How do I retain great instructors? How do I keep them in my facility and not to go to the next best thing? So I, I think really, again, if I could expand on engagement, that's really where I would offer suggestions and trends, if you will, of how the, the best leaders are engaging their employees. Um, and really thinking about, it's the same thing that, that we should be doing with our members. It's that with your members, you want them to have autonomy. You want them to have choice about what they do in their role. You want, the, you want them to really feel connected and have that relatedness, which is one of the higher of needs as well. Um, these extend to your employees as well. And so when you're finding opportunities to connect your teammates together, when you're also giving them a common goal, and when you're giving them autonomy in the way that they get to do their day-to-day -day job or the way they lead their individual teams, those are the things that employees resonate with and it will keep your employees for a longer period of time. Um, you know, great pay helps. So I'm going to advocate for great pay for instructors as well. But that's not the only thing. I mean, motivating employees comes from these same ways, the same ways that you connect your members to your club. It's no different than connecting to your instructors and your other employees to your club. Amy, you're going to have to remind me if, if I'm recalling this correctly, because I have a feeling we might have chatted about this in our last interview. But one of my all-time favorite books is by an author by the name of Susan Fowler. And she wrote a book called Why Motivating People Doesn't Work and What Does. And in that book, she actually shares three crucial questions that every leader should ask their employee. And pretty much every time I've spoken around the world, I always share these three questions because they relate to those, uh, the hierarchical, 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 I just realized hierarchy. I couldn't say that word. The hierarchy, hierarchical. Let's say hierarchy. <laughs> anyway. Human psychological needs, let's nice. say that, um, of autonomy, relatedness, and competence, which you just yeah. touched on. Uh, so if anyone wants to grab a copy of that book or of those questions or of the interview that I did with Susan, uh, then just check out the, the notes from today's interview and I'll make sure that I include it. As a matter of fact, I'll include it on the final slide of today's uh, interview. But, yeah, it relates exactly to what you're talking about. It's those questions that we need to ask in order to really tap into connecting with our employees. Yes, absolutely. Um, and by the way, I didn't, I wanted to make sure. Oh, you saw hi. My talking trends yeah. mug. So I love it. I love it. Thank you. Have an allow. My pleasure. I hope you get great. You know, so funny side note, um, we got these for, we got these talking trends mugs to do for the show. And now it's my favorite mug. Like I use this all the time, even when we're not recording, because it's so nice to drink out. I have been as well since I got ah, in them. Yeah. <laughs> A win for the mugs. <laughs> okay, let's keep going, Amy. So our next one is probably the topic that I've been most excited to talk to you about, given your wealth of experience in this area. So what are your thoughts on trends and predictions around fitness programming? Yes. So again, keeping with my theme and the global insights, I'll relate this to this generation active. Um, so really, there's two things to be thinking about when it comes to your fitness programming. And, and we get the opportunity to look at a lot of different schedules and do analysis and look at attendance. And I just love working with partners on building a compelling schedule that will get more people moving. So thinking about this population, again, 80% of your, your exercisers, and it's going to be your new joiner, you really should be thinking about HIT. I mean, HIT is not going away. HIT training is important for this generation as well as for the baby boomers and the Gen X. Uh, but it, remember that HIT training can be done in a non-impact way. So at Les Mills, we have a sprint class, which is a cycling class on a bike. But there's other ways that you can incorporate HIT training to hit the masses. It doesn't necessarily have to be the jumping and the burpees and the kind of harder impact. So that's one. And then the second we talked about on the last segment, but it's virtual. It's having an always on solution around your live programming. So the leaders in this space that are really addressing the needs of this independent, 
freedom. They want freedom. Um, they want it to be social, but they want it when they want it. And that's this generation active. Virtual programming in your club is probably the next best solution to a live program. And then an on-demand solution delivered through your app would be good. So if you look at good, better, best, good is on-demand, better is virtual in your club, and best would be your live programming. It's pretty amazing to see just the journey that, that virtual has taken over the last couple of years. I remember just two years ago uh, speaking about it and it was so new and, and there was only one or two people doing it. But now, you know, I you've just been at Succeed and I've just been at Phylex and now you can talk about virtual and people know what you're talking about, you know, and they're starting to understand the solutions and, and there are so more, so many more opportunities for people to bring virtual into their club from a... Um, uh, hardware, hardware perspective and also from a content perspective. And it really does provide tremendous flexibility, doesn't it, for club owners to be running programs sort of reoccurring and, and offer that out to their members. And I think I'm glad that you made the point around the on-demand system as well and because to me that is just such a uh, important way that we can connect with our members outside of the hours that they're in our facilities. Absolutely. And think about us. So the two of us travel quite a bit for work. This is a chance to stay connected to our home facility when we're not there, especially if the content is delivered through your facilities app. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that club owners are getting creative with staying connected. But that really is the end goal is to stay connected to your your members the other 23 hours of the day, as we often say. Um, so you're doing that through a group fitness application or through your your coaches reaching out uh, that's the end goal and especially with this generation active is they want everything to be accessible from their mobile phone and they want to have access to everything 24 7 mm -hmm. so again thinking that's how I would steer that conversation around programming two things hit and virtual you've got to be thinking about those options to meet the needs of the, the new joiner Great insight. Thank you so much, Amy. So let's move on to our final category, which is professional development, something that I know both of us are very, very passionate about. So what are your thoughts around that area? Yeah, so uh, so some of the ways, well, obviously, the ways people are getting information are live conferences. That would be best. Um, and then when you think about other applications, there's a lot of podcasts. I know that TED Talks was mentioned on the show. Um, a lot of your favorite kind of certifying organizations and or membership organizations. So in the U.S., it's URSA, it's IDEA. I, I shared I'm a member of ACE. They're all putting out content in a variety of ways. So you've got webinars, you have podcasts, you have lives, lives, conferences as well. So you can stay connected to the people or the organization that you're passionate about. Um, so one, I did want to make a, a shout out for something I've been working on. And so this is with Les Mills International. And I'm representing the US in a special project to kind of refresh our group fitness certification and bring it back, well, actually bring it back as a certification. Currently, it's just information. And so we've been busy for probably the last year really taking a look at the information that we believe is the pillar of, of every successful Group X program. And we're creating a certification so it would be worth CECs. And then any person in the organization who oversees group fitness, not just the GFM, but your owners, your senior executives, they would want to attend this so they can really become experts in this area around a variety of different um, challenges and opportunities we have in the group fitness space. Wow, that sounds really interesting, Amy. So what you're saying is that the uh, the instructor would take part in their certification as as they normally would to get their training, but you would also would it be a different type of training for the owner manager or would they be going through the same modules as the instructor that's learning it? Oh, great question. So it's totally different modules that are all around how to run the business. So we talk about topics such as scheduling, um, hiring great instructors, retaining rock stars, and then we go into the launch events and how do you keep 
group fitness relevant? How do you keep it alive in your club? How do you keep the excitement rolling and keep everybody engaged? Um, and so really that's the exciting piece is that it's for group fitness management, not managers. And it is all a different content that's around running the business successfully and getting the biggest attendance that you can. It makes me so happy to hear that because as someone that's been teaching group fitness for 10 years now, I remember in those first couple of years that I was teaching, there used to be such a big deal around quarterly launches and how we promoted the programs. And unfortunately, over the years, I've just kind of seen that fizzle away quite a lot, you know, that excitement that, that we used to have. So I love the, the concept that we might see that reinvigorated and brought back into our clubs so that we can really get the members just as excited as, as all of us instructors are every time a new release comes out. So I'm really excited to hear that. Do we have a timeline on when that training might be available or is that just to be confirmed? Yeah. Yeah, so the training is available now. It's been available to our current partners. Um, but later in the fall, we'll have the refreshed content with the CECs attached through ACE and through AFA. And again, I would just offer, I didn't come from a group fitness background in the industry. Uh, I come from freestyle personal training background. And uh, so this really, my what I advocated for when we're rethinking this is that this is for everybody in the industry. It's not just for clubs that have Les Mills programming. It's really about us positioning group fitness in a different way that we're really thinking about engaging more people through social assisted exercise. Um, so that was my voice that I put into the room and hopefully uh, you'll see some of that reflected in this group fitness certification. I look forward to hearing more, Amy. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So look, I have loved talk to, talking to you about all these upcoming trends and predictions and some of your thoughts based on the research that, that you're aware of and have been a part of. Uh, now, we get to catch up a couple of times a year at some major industry conferences. And as we're recording this, we are, what are we, kind of mid-April, let's say. And I just mentioned, I've just come out of Fire Lakes, you've just come out of Succeed. Give us a little bit of a snapshot of what else you've got coming up in 2019. Yeah, so I do all the big conferences. Idea is coming with the Les Mills Live. They're can, in conjunction again this year. Uh, we also have Fit Business Live, which is sponsored by Les Mills. Uh, I always do Club Industry, so I'll be doing that later in the fall. And then in addition to that, I, uh, I shared I get to attend a lot of the Rex events and, and Club Solutions. And then last but not least, I'm going to do Fit Life in Bend, Oregon, that will include river rafting. So I'm excited about that oh, event. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so that'll be a fun one. Um, what a great so addition to your conference. Yes. That's heaps of fun. Well, look, Amy, what I'm going to do is at the end of this video, we'll put some contact information. So if anyone wants to chat to you further, they can get in touch with you. Um, for those of you that are watching, I'm also going to put a link to Amy's interview that we did on the audio version of the show. So you guys can check that out as well. Amy, I'm really excited to be seeing you at Idea World in June of this year. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want to say just personally, a huge big thank you for all of your support. You have been such an incredible ambassador of the show. We are so grateful for all the times that you go out and talk about the show and share it and, uh, and just give us podcast love. So thank you so, so much. You're welcome. And my passion in this industry is networking. So uh, I do have a networking group. It's totally free. Fitness professionals networking group, just to throw that out there. Um, those are different ways we can connect, but I absolutely love what you're doing. I'm a big fan. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much. Yeah.